Hey, what's up, visionary? I know that you have probably been already told lots of things that you're supposed to be doing to build your vision, but hardly anyone ever really talks about the things that you're supposed to stop doing. And that is what we're going to cover in today's episode. This is special because I'm actually sharing with you a module that is in my online school called Visionpreneur School, which is geared to helping visionaries build brands that serve God, serve their communities, and serve their legacy through getting clear. And this is special because we just finished running our beta trial of Visionpreneur School, and it will be available to the masses very soon. So depending on when you're watching this, you may be able to get in or not, but I'm pretty sure I will be running a challenge while you're listening to this, no matter when you're listening to this. So either way, go check the links in the description to see what is available. All right. This module is called the five C's you must cut out. Hope you enjoy it. The five C's you must cut out. This is going to be good, guys. I have yet to see uh, the lessons in this module and any other self-improvement course or free content within this niche. Everyone always talks about what you need to start doing to accomplish your goals, things you need to get on, five tips to start doing, blah, blah, blah. But no one talks about what you need to stop doing in order to reach your goals or to build your vision. This was a huge bottleneck in my personal growth for a long time because you can't consistently do what's right if you don't stop doing what's wrong, right? They cancel each other out. So if you're wondering why you haven't been able to get ahead, even though you've been doing all the right things or you know to do all the right things, this very well could be the reason. I love this quote from Meister Eckhart. It says, God is not found in the soul by adding anything, but by a process of subtraction um there's a quote that my dad loves and I, I love it too and i'm probably butchering it but it was something like jesus didn't come to earth to teach uh to have us learn everything we don't know he came to earth to have us unlearn everything we thought we knew and like subtraction is a huge process of making quantum leaps like if you want to get if you want to increase your net worth subtract your debt like <laughs> subtract your expenses all these different things right so we're going to do addition by subtraction in this lesson and here are the five c's that will free you from the chains of mediocrity all that i have experienced personally in my vision preneur journey so the first one the first c is conflict now, what do I mean by conflict? By conflict, I mean what things are adding friction, resistance, hardship to you getting to where you want to go, right? This could come in a multitude of formats, but that is the main gist of it. What things are causing friction or abrasion from you getting to where you want to go, right? This could be... Um, negativity right in your environment in your space these could be negative people relationships or just a toxic environment that you're in that is conflict towards your vision this could be a job or this could be a co-worker or a boss that is detrimental to your vision this can be any habits or something that you have that is conflicting with your vision whether that is uh, getting up late or having a, a messy space or whatever it is that is like, like, I know one thing, like, um, my mother always used to say, like, I can't cook in the kitchen. That's not already clean. Like the kitchen already had to be clean. Like that was conflict for her preparing a meal, right? There could be situations in your life where your environment or your space or whatever you're trying to do is not conducive for what you were trying to accomplish. And you kind of go through this cycle of, not feeling like doing it or having too much conflict. Like the space I'm in right now, right? I have like my webcam, I have my ring light, I have my computer, I have my phone set up on a thing right here. Uh, like I've come, I've created, I'm still making this space much better. I wanted to get it to a point where I could just like, if I need to make content, boom, like everything set up. There's no setup time. Redu reducing as much friction as possible from me creating. That is me eliminating conflict in my life. Now, of course, you can't remove everything, right? Like you can't remove your children. <laughs> you can't remove, you know, like your roommates. Well, you possibly can remove your roommates, but there's certain things that are going to be harder to remove, but you have to do something in order to reduce that conflict 
as much as you can. An example of this is in my home, I'm not the only person that lives in my home. If if there is an inkling of knowing that I am conscious and I have a pulse, I know I will be, but it's just a matter of minutes before I am pulled in a multitude of directions. It does not matter what time, what place, what anything. Like if I'm alive, I'm going to be called to do something, something that is not on my agenda. So what I have to do to release that conflict, I'm not moving. I like my situation. So what I have to do is I have to get up early. I get up before anyone gets up or I stay up after everyone goes to sleep because I know that's the time I have to create, to write, to type, to record videos without any interruptions. Like I have to remove that conflict and I have to be intentional about it, even if I can't actually remove myself or that person or that thing from my actual environment, I have to get innovative. I have to create, get creative about reducing that conflict. So I hope that makes sense. I think that might be the, the one that's the most confusing, just reading it off, off paper. Number two, content. Now, this might be interesting or surprising to some people because you're like, well, isn't part of being a visionpreneur being like creating content? Isn't this space for transformational content creators? Yes, absolutely. Which is why you need to stop consuming as much. Now, I am a huge, huge advocate of consuming content. Um, I consume content all day long. And something that isn't in this course that, of course, we can talk about and I probably will put it in the community is called having, having something called IMS, the Information Management, Management System. Um, that is something that I have been doing for a very long time. Uh, but within the past couple of years, I've gotten very meticulous about how organized I am because I could pull out things like on the dot. Like I, I know if I need something that is talking about vision casting, I know exactly what folder, exactly what note, exactly where it is in, the, in, in, in my document system. Like I could pull it and I could talk on it and I could go. Um, but that is from me getting really, really particular about how I consume content. Here's the problem. I'm sure everyone in this group, everyone's looking at this course, everyone in this community is a voracious learner which means you're constantly reading books, constantly listening to books, listening to podcasts, um, watching YouTube videos, taking courses, doing master classes, live challenges. You're doing all this stuff. You're consuming, 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 getting all this knowledge because you need the knowledge to get to where you want to go, right? Yes and no. There's a threshold here where it becomes diminishing returns. And I often, what I often will find myself consuming content as an escape or excuse of actually creating things for my vision. Like I was like, oh, I need to learn more. No, you don't. You need to execute more. And this was a huge, 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 huge breakthrough for me when I realized that I needed to keep my content consumption to creation ratio level, which means three for one, like, or two to one. Every piece of content that I consume, and I, when I say piece of content, I'm talking about long form, not like necessarily like TikToks or whatever, because you consume a whole bunch of those. But like long form YouTube video or podcast, like every time I listen or watch one of those, I got to create something. And here's the, here's the thing. When you start creating, you automatically start to consume less because you don't have time. <laughs> Content creation takes time. You don't have time to consume what everybody else is doing when you are on the mission for what you are doing, but you got to cut it out. Here's the second part about content. You don't need to watch the news. You don't need to see what's on the Yahoo homepage. You don't need to see what Beyonce is wearing or what's on the shade room or spiritual world. Uh, you don't need to even watch like Netflix or like I. I don't watch television at, at all. I don't watch television. I actually don't even have social media. Actually, I might have just reload, re-downloaded because I needed to do something. I, I have two phones. I don't have social media on my phone. And I'm a content creator. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have tweets. I type that on my computer. Like, content, like, it's a distraction. Most of the time, it's a distraction. 20% of the time, it's inspiration. 80% of the time, it's a distraction. Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. You don't need to watch the news. You have friends. They'll tell you everything that you need to know. You don't need to watch Netflix. That is, you're just making them rich while you stay poor. 
You don't need to be up on the la the latest pop culture that is not investing in your life whatsoever. You're just living vicariously through somebody else. How about you get it on your own? Like there's you don't need it. You don't need to consume the content. It is a distraction and is deterring you. It's taking away, sapping the lim most limited resource and also the most important resource you have, which is your time, especially if you don't have money. Like if you don't have leverage of, of wealth right now, money, where you can get more for your time, all you have is your time. That is your most leverageable asset. Be conscious about how you're using it. I know I'm going on and on. This is not supposed to be this long. Let me move on. But I hope you understand what I mean by content. You need to keep your content consumption to creation ratio right. You need to create more than you consume. Consuming is okay because you got to learn. And you got to have a system to manage it. But you got to create more than you consume because you know how it goes. You scrolling for an hour. You just wasted a lot of time. confusion <laughs> there was a quote um i don't know if it's a quote but i remember it was a point made by donald miller he said one thing that a lot of people do is choose confusion and i was like what do you mean by that when you choose confusion like you choose to be confused because it's easier than choosing to get clear and I had to raise my hand and say, I think I have done this a couple of times where it's like, oh, no, I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for some feedback from from my mentor. I'm 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 trying to see what my audience has to say. I'm running a poll like I'm doing. All, it's like, bro, just make a decision. <laughs> like you're choosing to be confused. There's, this is not legitimate confusion. This is an option. This is a choice. And lots of times we choose to be confused whether we're cognizant or aware of it or not because it is the easier route than choosing clarity because clarity takes work. It takes a lot of work. As you see, you're going through this course, it takes a lot of work. So sometimes we choose to be confused because at least at that point we can have an excuse, right? Oh, I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm A-B testing some things. <laughs> I've heard the most crazy, I've said the craziest things. Bruh, you're choosing to be confused. You're not really confused. Well, you are really confused, but it's because you're choosing it, not because you have to be here. Choose clarity. All right. Number four, cockiness. You have to eliminate cockiness. So you eliminate conflict. You got to eliminate environments, spaces, and people that are adding friction or abrasion to you getting to where you want to go. You got to eliminate content. There's so much useless, aimless content that you're consuming that you do not need, like the news, like Netflix, like random social media accounts that you don't need to be following anyway. You need to have your content creation to consumption ratio balanced correctly. You need to create more than you consume. Number three, confusion. Don't choose confusion. Choose clarity. We often choose confusion because it is an easier route than getting clear, but getting clear gets you where you want to go. Number four. Eliminate cockiness. You don't know everything. And I talk about this uh, in a later part of the course where, you know, you got to have the AAA sequence where you accept. Well, no, I'm sorry. You acquire knowledge. Then you got to accept that knowledge. Like you learned it from someone who's done it. Accept that they know what they're talking about. And number three, you got to apply that knowledge, right? But it begins with you eliminating cockiness, realizing that you don't know everything. It doesn't matter where, whether they three years old. If they have done something that you want to learn how to do, listen. Okay. <laughs> Here's the problem that we often face. We make assumptions about either the steps that person took or what the steps we need or what the steps are that we need to take in order to reach the goal, right? An example is, um, oh, you need to post three times a day on Twitter to to increase your follower count. And the first thing we say, well, yeah, well, you need to post three times on Twitter because you're talking about cryptocurrency. I'm not talking about cryptocurrency. I'm doing blah, 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 blah. And we automatically assume that we have the most unique situation in the world like oh it will work for everyone else but i'm different you're not different bro you're not i hate to break it to you but you need to eliminate the cockiness you need to eliminate anything that is your ego that's telling you oh i don't need to do it that way blah 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 now there i talk about this in the triple a sequence there's room for adjustments because we're all different 
But that's after you accepted and applied the information because you have an open mind, you've eliminated the ego, and you've eliminated any cockiness out of your game and are here to learn without any biases. All right. Number five and the last one, concealed vices. So we got to eliminate conflict, any friction in our space, keeping us from our dream. Content, you don't need to be consuming more than you're creating. Confusion, choose clarity. Don't choose confusion, even though confusion is an easier path. Got to eliminate cockiness. You don't know it all. You got to listen. Got to acquire, got to accept, got to apply the information. And number five... have to eliminate concealed vices. I guarantee you this is the most difficult. And you might think the ones up to this point are already difficult. This by far is the most difficult because concealed vices are things that either no one knows you are doing or struggling with, or number two, have become socially acceptable, right? So let me give an example of what I mean by socially acceptable. What has become socially acceptable is spending hours on social media just consuming trash, right? That has become a normal thing. If you look at the average watch time on people's phones, that has become a normal occurrence. Or let's just say socially acceptable has become consuming a lot of sugar, right? We consume candy. We consume uh, uh, dairy products that have a lot of sugar. We consume a whole bunch of processed foods that have a lot of sugar and sodium. Uh, We consume a whole lot of desserts that have a lot of sugar, like especially in America and in Western civilization, like having a lot of sugar has become socially normal when it is quite deadly and not right. (laughs) Right. But if you consume a whole bunch of dessert, no one's looking at you like you're crazy. Like you're like, oh, you just have a sweet tooth. Like a sweet tooth is like, oh, it's not that it's, it's just sweet tooth or whatever. When it really is like. No, that's bad. Like you're killing yourself, like type of thing. That's what I mean by socially acceptable. Another one of those things is watching Netflix, binging Netflix. That has become very socially acceptable. Gossiping on social media has become very socially acceptable. Like there's just things that are just kind of normal, um, considered normal in our society that honestly are just toxic. So conceal vices. Let me let you, this this phrase would pretty much sum up what I mean by concealed vices. Concealed vice is something that you really enjoy doing or that you enjoy doing, I'll say, while you're doing it and immediately after you highly regret it or even hate yourself, right? This could be eating a bowl of ice cream at midnight. This could be Uh, scrolling on social media for an hour and a half, just wasting time, consuming aimless, toxic content. This could be uh, watching porn or masturbating when you don't want to anymore. Like all these different things that no one knows that that are happening, but they drain you. They drain your self-confidence. They drain your esteem. They drain all these different things and you cannot properly pursue your vision when you're in these states of depression, guilt, all these different things because of concealed vices. This was one of the most major, most difficult things for me to overcome. Like there were so many things that either were socially acceptable or just no one knew I was struggling with that were killing everything that I was trying to pursue in my life. Honest to God, like, (laughs) so Of course, you're not going to share what those things are necessarily in the community. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but think about it. What are those things? And what do you need to be intentional about getting rid of? And possibly you can get an accountability partner in the community and you can share some of these things so that you can improve. And I recommend you find someone that is not struggling with those things. You don't want someone that is also struggling because then y'all just going to be two people struggling that are not getting anywhere. (laughs) I've learned that the hard way too. Like, don't find an accountability partner that's in the same place you are. Like, Two fat people don't make a healthy person. (laughs) All right, let me move on before I say something crazy. Uh, That's 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 it, guys. So conflict, got to eliminate conflict. What is uh, getting in the way, adding friction to you, accomplishing your vision? 
You got to eliminate content, aimless content that is just distracting you. You got to have a proper content creation to consumption ratio. Confusion. Got to eliminate choosing confusion. Choose clarity, even though choosing confusion is a much simpler and easier route. Cockiness. You got to eliminate cockiness because you don't know everything. You got to acquire the knowledge, accept the knowledge, and then apply the knowledge without making any assumptions first. And number five, you got to eliminate the concealed vices. What are the things that you do that you enjoy but hate right after the fact? You got to get rid of those because they're killing your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and ultimately they're killing your dream and your vision. That's it, guys. All right. Now, how do I find where to stop this thing? Ah, here we go.